So how many $100 million paperweights do we own? I would not categorize the F-35 as a paperweight. Well, if, we, if it's not mission capable, if it's, what, what, do we just stare at it and admire it? Hey, how y'all doing? You doing okay? Boy, isn't this crazy? Did you guys watch the debates? <laughs> yeah, but the thing of it is, everybody acts like they're so shocked about old Joe Biden having, having these little glitchy problems. The man had those kind of problems during the 2020 election, but nobody seemed to call it down on it. This guy, and I have said it numerous times, had no business in the White House. You could tell that he had some sort of physical ailment and he, that he also had probably dementia. Or all the time was, I'm not a doctor. Don't really know. But I've heard other doctors report on looks like dementia, possibly all the time. <sighs> the man shouldn't have been in the White House. He has got us in, in three wars, basically. Um... Hopefully the Chinese doesn't jump into the middle of Taiwan and here we go again until this guy gets out of office. This thing over in Ukraine, it's getting deeper by the minute. I'm really hoping that that doesn't turn into a major catastrophe for us. We have to stop all this warring stuff. What is going on right now, we have pushed the world too far. It's like with Britain, you know. Britain was the great leader of the world until after World War One. And it began to slide. It's losing, it lost its hegemony and control of the world. Joe Biden is still thinking that he's got control of the world, and he's losing it. And all he's managing to do is really tick a lot of people off, which is not good. And we're getting stuck between the rock and the hard spot. I uh, heard, I think it was today or the other day, uh, last couple of days, Saudi Arabia has notified the EU and the U.S. that if we try to steal that $300 billion of assets of Russia's that they've got held here in, the, in between us and, and the EU, that they're going to pull all their money out of our two countries. And it's a substantial sum. Substantial sum. It will, every financial report I've heard, will really drop the bomb on us. We have got, we're going back into an election cycle. I'm good grief, here we go again. And one of the things I wanted to tell you about is um, ourcountryourchoice.com, okay? It is a group that is trying to pull like-minded people, conservative people together because the Republicans aren't taking care of us. They're, they're just not. Uh, they talk a good game. But then they get in there and half the time they're voting with the Democrats. The rest of the time they're they're just kind of tom fooling around with the nonsense. I'm, I'm sick of their hearings. I, I swear that's how they spend half their time. I'll give them a job to do. Why don't you guys go through every law that you've wrote for the last hundred years and see how many of them are constitutional. We're not getting this stuff reviewed. Now I'm hearing that the Democratic Party wants to Go ahead and try to pack the Supreme Court. They just don't like these folks because, and, and seriously, a lot of their rulings are pretty unanimous a lot of times. They are a good court because it, it, it is like this. If it's not written on that document, it's not constitutional. I had gotten in numerous arguments 
with people back over back years back over Roe versus Wade when that thing first happened. I sat down and I read the Constitution again and kind of told them, yeah, no, it's not a right. And the court has no business giving you that right. You can't legislate from the Supreme Court. Number one, the Supreme Court only legislates to the federal government. It does not have any authority or power over the state. We have got to get this country back to thinking right. You have, first and foremost, the head of the country, the boss. Okay, is you. But you delegate through uh, elected representation to first your state. And those state elections are very important. And then to the federal government. Now, the federal government's thought over the years that, yeah, we don't have to do that. We can be the big dogs. No, they can't. They keep trying to use the supremacy clause. Now, what the supremacy clause is in the Constitution is a clause that allows them the jobs that are assigned solely to the federal government in the U.S. Constitution. It's written there. It's not, you know, something to translate. It's written there. Commerce, that's a big one. Leveling of tariffs, that's another one. Our original government collected tariffs from shippers and so forth. That's how they paid for the federal government. There was no taxes in this country. The supremacy clause does not mean every little piece of paper that they tear out of the Congress or tear out of the White House or is supremacy law. No, it's not. And we that's, that's what I'm trying to tell people. We need to get back to state rights. Okay? And the only way we're going to do that, I believe it's the 24th Amendment. The one that gave Congress told the Senate now you're going to be elected instead of selected. Okay. The Constitution said that the senators, the Senate, could be either A, could be elected by the people, B, could be elected by or appointed by the state legislatures and serve at the will of the state legislature, or by the governor and serve at the will of the governor. That's what gave the states authority. The states had representatives in that body to where the house comes up with some of the crazy stuff the state goes who's going to pay for that federal government want to pay for it because the states are not now, i'm going to tell you something they could kick a senator right out of office that would be his last term if he voted against the will of the state it was the state's representatives we need that that's what gave the states their authority over the federal government once you understand that, then you sit back and go, well, if we're electing, and I've talked about this before, you know, if we elect the senators, two of them per each state, by vote, that's democratic, all right. It's mob rule again. Here we go. We are not a democracy. This country was designed to be a republic. We're a constitutional Republic. What does that mean? If it's not in that constitution, it doesn't happen. Back to what I started saying about the Roe versus Wade stuff and things of this nature. A lot of times folks get in these big huffy arguments because back ways back where you had either an extremely conservative court or an extremely liberal court to come up with these wild little rulings saying, oh yeah, that's constitutional. Yeah, yeah you got a constitutional right to that. Very simple, folks. You pop that Constitution open and read it and see. Our individual rights through the Constitution is in the Bill of Rights. Easy to find. Read down that list. I assure you, you would not find the word like abortion. <laughs> it's not there. You, and they didn't even line out. You got the right to gay kids. Okay, because that'd be an unlimited thing. I could think of about teenagers. It's not in there, folks. You know, the life, liberty, pursuit of happiness. Yeah, remember that? <coughs> All Americans are guaranteed it. Even the unborn. So that's what happened there. And, ever since, and now with Roe versus Wade disappearing, there are people like the gays and so forth are all having this heart attack. That, oh, they're coming for us next. No, no. I don't think, you know, it does say in there that it's a marriage between a woman and a man. In the Constitution, I believe. I'm not sure about that one under the Bill of Rights, exactly how that's worded. 
But as long as it doesn't line that out, uh, no, it's, it's legal for them to be moving. And anything we want to change, this is the beauty of that document those, those old boys came up with. They knew it was going to get outdated. They knew we were going to change as a country. So they put something in there called an amendment. You have the right to amend that constitution. Now, you got to have the states get in there, and you got to have a majority of the states go along with you. Say, yeah, it's okay. We'll go with that. It does not say anywhere in that constitution that a Supreme Court justice can sit there, and if three or four of them get together and vote together, it becomes law? No, it does not. I think the Supreme Courts need to take a bunch of these rulings and toss them in the trash. Constitution is a very simple document. Very simple document. It's either in there, or it's not. It's either under the Bill of Rights, or it's not. And if we all agree that something needs to be put in there, then we need to get our heads together, and we get, need to get our states to do up a constitutional convention and fix it by amending that constitution of ours. We did that with prohibition. Found out that didn't work so hot, and what did we do? We did another amendment to get rid of it. That was back when people, Americans, understood you got to be involved in government. So flooding the court isn't going to change the thing. It, <laughs> I don't care if you got seven people deciding or 27 decide. Doesn't matter. The only thing you're going to do is cause more confusion on the court, which is kind of what the Democratic Party is looking to do. The Democrats are not the Democrats anymore. They're truly not. And here's how I can tell you that, without a doubt in my mind. I watched Joe Biden running in the 2020 election, and I'm sure all y'all did too. And you probably saw the clips and things of this nature of him stammering and stuttering and falling and you name it. The man had issues. But now after the debate, oh, all the Democrats have jumped up and went, ah, we just noticed there's something wrong with that man. Let's see, he's tried to start three wars now, and he's running off in circles half the time. The Easter Bunny had to lead him back into where he was supposed to be at. Frequently, they have to trace, track him down because he wanders off out into the green somewhere. But mostly, here, here's, here's what I'm most concerned about. And I'm going to keep this from being too long. Mostly what I'm concerned about, folks, is nobody, nobody should be above the law. Take Trump and his top secret documents. He had a right, and he claimed he did, declassified all the information that he had in those boxes. If he claims it is declassified by the president, guess what? <laughs> That's legal. They're no longer classified, so the Democrats were making a big hoopla over that. Joe Biden, as a U.S. senator, got a bunch of classified documents and had them stored in an office that was leased and paid for by the Red Chinese, and these were classified documents. Had them stored in his garage, had them in every house he had. The Justice Department investigated it and said, yeah, yeah, he's guilty. But because he's old and demented, doesn't have much of a memory anymore. We, we probably couldn't get a conviction on him. No, but you might get him committed. And the man needs to come out of the presidency back then. This two-sided law stuff has to stop. When the FBI was created, the senators actually came out and said one simple thing. If it ever becomes political, it needs to be disbanded. Think about that. If it ever becomes political, it needs to be disbanded. Has it become political? You bet. It needs to be disbanded. This thing has really went along. I'm a little frustrated with this. how much of the software is driving me crazy. I need to get back to it. Love you guys and appreciate you. If I send this thing up at all, it'll be surprising. Anyway, hope you all are having a good, good week. We'll talk to you real soon.